We all know stress is bad for us. It can cause all kinds of health-related issues, but can excessive stress cause MS, cause a relapse or worsening of our symptoms? And the bigger question is, are there things we can do to help manage this stress? In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what the research says about stress and MS, and also techniques that we can use to decrease stress and possibly decrease our symptoms. Sound good? Let's go. The studies on MS and stress are mixed. There's no direct evidence that stress causes MS, but there does seem to be evidence that stress may be associated with worsening of symptoms and possibly MS relapses. If you talk to anyone who's struggling with their symptoms, they will definitely tell you stress makes them worse. Let me know in the comments below if stress affects your MS. Let's see what the research shows. In this review, they state that the studies looking at the association of stress with relapses show a fairly consistent association where higher stress is associated with a higher risk of relapse. Higher stress levels also appear to increase the risk of development of gadolinium enhancing lesions. Yeah, active lesions. And in this review, they found that Substantial evidence indicates that stress can precipitate or worsen symptoms of inflammation in general, and more specifically in multiple sclerosis. MS is an inflammatory disease, so we definitely want to decrease stress to decrease inflammation. In this study on stressful life events and MS, they found that these results are consistent with the hypothesis that stress is a potential trigger of MS disease activity and suggests that autonomic tone and stress reactivity may play a role in the development of stress-related exacerbations. Again, stress can be a trigger for increased disease activity. There's also evidence that stressful life events can dramatically increase the risk of a relapse. In this study, they found in patients with multiple sclerosis, the experience of at least one stressful event during a period of four weeks was associated with double the risk of an exacerbation within the next week. It's pretty clear that stress does play a role in MS symptoms and relapses. So what can we do about it? Excellent question. One of the ways that I mitigate stress is through increasing kindness through compassion and mindfulness towards myself and others, by being careful in how I live. Being careful, full of care, can help us to reduce stress. The Oxford Dictionary defines careful as making sure of avoiding potential danger, mishap, or harm, or done with or showing thought and attention. Both are great definitions. Under the first definition, there are things that we can do to avoid potential danger, mishap, and harm, like wearing our seat belts or looking both ways before we cross the street. With MS, we can also implement habits into our diets and lifestyles to do this as well, like eating foods that promote health or minimizing foods that are inflammatory or cause harm, or adding a regular exercise routine that can definitely help us avoid danger, mishap, and harm by keeping us strong and more stable. Getting enough sleep will do the same. Did you know that not getting enough sleep can lead to poor cognition, inability to make decisions, and slower reaction times? According to Matthew Walker, author of Why We Sleep, a great book that I will link below, the chance of injury rapidly rises as sleep hours decrease and that drunk drivers often react late, whereas drowsy drivers don't react at all. That's kind of scary. We can also seek the help of a therapist to help us be more mindful and reduce stress. I've been seeing my therapist since I was diagnosed. Taking care of our mental health is just as important as taking care of our physical health. So I invite you to look at diet, exercise, sleep, mindfulness, and therapy as ways to reduce stress and reduce the potential for danger, mishap, and harm. Under the second definition, done with or showing thought and attention, there are things that we can do to show thought and attention towards ourselves and towards others. One of these is by the words that we use. Words matter. How we talk to ourselves about how we live with our MS matters. Are you using words like this to describe how you're living with your MS? 
fighting, battling, struggling, attacked, diseased? If you are, it's completely normal and understandable. We are conditioned to use these words. We hear them and see them from the moment we're diagnosed, from medical professionals, support groups, others with MS, and in the media. But I invite you to have a change in perspective and start using some different words to describe living with MS, like accepting, caring, releasing, unwell, and healing. See the difference? The second list is more compassionate towards ourselves, more thoughtful. These words are less challenging and more geared towards wellness. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a man is what he thinks about all day. If we're walking around thinking we're all of these things, then we're gonna be more stressed. If we're using words more like these, we're gonna be more compassionate and mindful. I've shared before that I'm not fond of the MS warrior mentality when it comes to living with MS. I completely understand it, and if it works for you, that's awesome. It doesn't resonate with me to fight my own immune system. It's a part of me, and it's not functioning as it should. It's a part of me that's unwell, and I want to help it be well. I want to approach it with a caring and compassionate attitude. Does this resonate with you? let me know in the comments below. I invite you to shift your perspective when it comes to how you think about living with your MS. I also invite you to shift your perspective and how we respond to others so we can further reduce our stress. It can be very stressful when others respond to our diagnosis or symptoms in ways that we find hurtful. It was for me after I was diagnosed. I was hurt and angry and frustrated by the lack of understanding and by the unsolicited advice I received. Has this happened to any of you? Let me know in the comments below. But shifting my perspective helped. Thinking about it from the intent of the person that doesn't understand our symptoms or is giving advice can help. Chances are they're truly not understanding. Heck, I don't get this disease sometimes. And each of us experience it differently. Most of the time, when they don't understand or they're giving advice, it comes from a place of caring for us. They want to understand. They want us to be well. They want us to feel better. They're giving us advice because they like us, because they care about us. So here are my tips for dealing with unsolicited advice. You can say things like this. Thank you, I've looked into that. Or, thank you, but my health team and I have a plan to treat my MS. Or, that does sound interesting, I will check it out. But my all-time favorite way to respond when I don't want to get into a discussion or a debate came from my therapist. It is a one-word, one-syllable response. It is, huh. It acknowledges that you heard them, but it neither agrees nor disagrees with them. Then you can change the subject and move on. It will save you so much stress. Stress may be a trigger for symptoms and relapses, but there are things that we can do to try to manage stress with diet and lifestyle. To see more on stress, check out these videos. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description below. Until next time, be well.